Patricia out or the best interest of the team or whatever it may be and, and, and trust that. But the other thing Coach Bowden said is most of the criticism is, is pointed at the coach and not so much the person himself. Sometimes it feels personal, but if I wasn't the head coach of Georgia, I wouldn't catch some of the grief. But, you know, those people say good stuff once in a while, too. <laughs> I, think, I think you're in a good room this morning. But we, uh, um, as, as you said last time, Catherine, I believe uh, you let, it, let the cat out of the bag. That you're, you're not just sort of in the bleachers and the stands, um, maybe in the air-conditioned room where other head coaches' wives might be, but you're right on the right on the field. How did how did that how did that transfer as a place where you felt like that's where I belong? Well, um, early on, um, our kids when they were young, I would take them to practice, and so I would so that they could see their dad, and I would get to know the players and. So, you know, I, would, I could interact with them and, you know, when you cheer for them and stuff like that, it's, I like to know what's going on behind the scenes um, with them and in their lives. And so when I was there, when he would talk about them, I knew he was talking about and when I would see them around, I could pray for them or speak to them a word of encouragement. And so then as our children got older and they had their activities, I was not around any longer. And so I started, I would go to the games, but I was sitting by myself sometimes at away games. And um, I just was like trying to think about, well, how can I get reengaged in what Mark's doing and, and in the players and in their lives? And that's, you know, I just happened to, I think I just looked and I watched and I said, I can stand behind that water table. I can do that. I can mix that power eight. I can do that. Anyway, so I asked him, I said, can I do that? And he said, well, it's okay with me, but you have to ask Ron Corson. And so I went to Ron and asked for the job and he gave it to me very graciously. And so, yeah, and so that's what I do now. And so now I can see the players. I can see their faces as they walk by and I can read their jerseys. And um, I can I can know how to pray for him, and when he tells me what's going on behind the scenes, I know you know how to give an encouraging word when there's need sometimes. So when you win the national championship next year, do you get a ring? Uh, <laughs> I should get a pendant. I get a pendant. <laughs> Lord willing, it'd be, it would be. That's not all she's gonna get. But <laughs> 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 stuff. So let me. Uh, Ask you this question and uh, uh, in transition, Coach. Um, so you're in hostile, you're in hostile territory. You're in a place where, for for the people in the stands, you're the you're the enemy. Um, you are in the lead. Uh, it seems like the game is in the bag. Uh, there's 35 seconds left. It's fourth and 18, uh, and the opponents are throwing the ball. And in a matter of seconds, uh, everything changes, and Auburn wins the game. <laughs> it wasn't funny that day. So the question is, the question is, how do you coach a young player that the whole world, you know, because we all see, and maybe some folks were cheering and for different opponents and a lot of dog fans, and, and we all feel that moment. But that those kids on the on the field, um, your team, yourself, how how do you coach? through a loss? How do you coach through a dramatic loss? Well, the first uh, thing I did when we got in the locker room is we always have everybody gathered up and we settle down and then I had uh, that young man stand up in front of the team and then I just cussed him out. Uh, no, I didn't do that. <laughs> I did not do that. No, the, the thing that we... I know. <laughs> the reality is we, we know football is a team sport and uh, we know one play doesn't necessarily make the difference. That only that That's one play. So That's good. even even though um, uh, it was a crucial thing, it was a little thing that he had done differently. We would we would have won that game. What I've reminded the team was there's a lot of little things along the entire game. Offensive line might have made a mistake. Quarterback might have made a bad read. A running back might have done something he shouldn't have done. Somewhere throughout the game that changed the course of of, the, of that game. So I, we can't just blame it on one guy. We gotta understand we're all together and uh, gotta believe in each other and just keep keep moving forward. That's good, Coach. Uh, I'd like to see if David, David, you wouldn't mind coming up and as you come up, uh, Coach and Catherine, maybe you guys can tell us a little bit about your family, their names, and, and what they're up to these days. 
All right, John and Anna. John's our oldest. They're, he's married to Anna. Anna and, the, and John are, well, she's pregnant. And uh, we're going to be grandparents for the first time in July, so we're fired up. Congratulations. My, my grandpa name is Poopa, and her grandma name is Sassy. And, uh, that's what I want her to be called. But, uh, anyway, David, David's about, David is our number two son. He's at Belmont University. He loves music and loves Jesus. And, uh, and then uh, he's going to sing a little bit. And then uh, we've got Zach and Anya, who both uh, we adopted from Ukraine a long time ago. And uh, Zach's full of, uh, it, well, Zach's still trying to figure out how to behave right this minute, but uh, three out of four is pretty good. Anya is um, uh, a junior in high school right now, and uh, her thing is equestrian, she loves that. But she's also kind of scared being the only one left in the house right now. And uh, we got all eyes on her, she can't get away with anything, and she's really looking forward to leaving the house, so. We're kind of looking forward to her leaving too. <laughs> anyway, that's our family. And, uh, can, can you welcome the Rick family again? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The last thing was awkward. <laughs> Best kiss in PDA. Come on, guys. Yeah. Oh, I can hear myself now. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. As I said, my name is David. Um, I'm going to sing an original song for you guys today. It's called Drawing Lines. And uh, this song really talks about, there's many things you can relate it to, but I'm going to re relate it to the church. And uh, there's a lot of the different denominations in the church, and we draw lines that segregate each other. Um, when we really, um, we all believe in the same belief, and if we really all um, spoke out in one loud voice, and uh, portray the same message to everyone in the world, then um, I think it would be a lot clearer to everybody on exactly what we believe. And there wouldn't be as much confusion, and we could all just get along, uh, pretty much in the simplest terms that I can say. Um, so I'm going to sing the song for you guys. I hope you enjoy it. Draw the lines they're supposed to be Stop hate, 
Stop.